What's up everyone? My name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking. In this series, we're learning Git and source control, and we have covered so much so far. I hope you guys are enjoying this course. This is going to be a quick video, one of the easier videos in this playlist. We're going to talk about how to create a git ignore file, and then how to create a readme file. Uh, git ignore is used to literally ignore files from git. So if you're pushing and pulling and there's files that you don't want included, you can put it in your git ignore. And then we're going to create a readme for our repo. If you're using GitHub and you go to a repository and you see some text on the main page of that repository, you're probably looking at the readme for that repo. So this video will talk a little bit about how to create those readmes in our projects. Welcome back everybody. We are in this source control and Git playlist. We've covered so much in this playlist so far. Cloning, committing, staging, stashing, pushing, pulling, merging, rebasing, cherry picking, PRs, PR templates. So much stuff that we've covered. I hope you all are enjoying this playlist. You probably noticed throughout this course, and I kind of wanted to do this earlier, but all the time while we've been committing, we've had these stupid little files up here that we never really committed. It, this is the user interface XC user state file. There was another file for some time that was the DS store file. So when you're committing these files to and from GitHub, most of the time in your repo, you want to include all of the files, right? You want to include all the files that you're changing and you're adding your code to. For example, you would never want to exclude one of your actual views. Imagine you are committing and you forgot to always push the home view. That would cause problems. But sometimes you have other files in your Xcode project that are actually not related to the code that you're writing. So for example, we see here, something that's not committed right now is this user interface XC user state. And that has to do with just my personal settings in Xcode. And it has nothing to do with the actual repo. It's just, I've changed some setting. I don't even know what setting I've changed, but it doesn't matter if I push this or not to GitHub. And so when I go and look back in our Xcode project way earlier in the series, when we set up Git, we added in the source control Git folder here, we told Xcode to ignore these files, the XC user data folder, as well as the DS store file. So every time we've been committing through Xcode, it already is ignoring both of these files. When we go to actually commit here, it's not even asking us to commit those files because it knows to ignore them, right? Again, that's the XC user data, which is what Git Kraken is showing us right here. Now, again, this is for Xcode only. So when we're doing our source control through, from a different provider, so not through Xcode, so through like Git Kraken, Git Kraken doesn't know to actually ignore these files yet. So what we can actually do, rather than just on an Xcode level, on the actual entire repo on GitHub, we can create something called a .git ignore file. And that's going to tell anything that is pointing to this repo to ignore those files. So I'm going to open up our repo again. I'm going to go back to the root of the repo. And this time we're going to create another file just at the root level, not inside the GitHub folder, but at the root level for this repo. So let's go here and add a file. And we're going to name this file dot git ignore. It has to be named exactly this. And now I've gone again to ChatGPT, who's our best friend here. And I said, create a git ignore file for Xcode and Swift projects. So depending on the type of project, you're going to want to ignore different files. The files that we just saw are related to Xcode. So if you're working in Python, you might have a different git ignore file. But this is the basic template that it returned me. And it says, let's ignore the derived data. Let's ignore the DS store. So that's the file that we just had in our Xcode. All of the user data settings in Xcode, we can ignore those as well. And there's a lot of other stuff here that honestly, I've never even seen before, but I'm going to actually include this entire file. So let's copy the code and then come back in here. And if you're not using ChatGPT, you can always come, this repo is public. So you guys can come to this repo and then find this file and just copy that code as well. If you don't want to actually use ChatGPT. I am going to use this entire template, even though I don't know what some of these are, just because I assume that ChatGPT probably knows better than I do. If there's ever a case where I'm trying to commit a file and for some reason it's not showing up, so I can't actually stage those changes, chances are it's probably one of these files and then I'll come in here and I'll tweak this. But generally speaking, I think this is going to work out of the box. 
I want to make sure that the XC user data as well as that DS store that we just had are both ignored. So let's go ahead and now commit these changes. Let's commit them directly to the main branch and hopefully it should work. Go back into Git Kraken. I'm going to delete the discard all changes. Let's pull down the main branch. And now hopefully going forward, those files are going to be automatically ignored and they don't show up in my commit history here. If the files are still showing up, chances are you've already committed them once to the repo. So this is telling, so this is telling the repo to ignore the files, but if they're already committed and they're already included, oftentimes you're still going to see the files. So you might have to do a commit to remove them from the repo if they're already committed, but if they're not, they should now be ignored. So I didn't do this earlier in the course because creating a git ignore is very secondary, right? It's like, we need to learn all the core stuff way before we deal with git ignore files. But now that you know this, the next time you go and create a repo or, or a new project, you can just create that git ignore out of the box. You can just copy it from one project to another. And I wouldn't wait until you're done building to add the file. The last thing we're gonna do in this video is actually update the readme on GitHub. So we can literally click here, add readme. We could also just add the file manually like we've been doing with the other files. But let's add a readme here. And this is just like all of our other markdown. We just wanna add markdown here and then we're gonna commit our readme to our repo. Generally, you can Google how to write markdown or you can use ChatGPT or whatever it is. The easiest way that I usually create readmes is I literally will just go and find another project where I like the readme. So for example, I have some readmes already on like this project here. So I might go in and actually just copy. I don't want the image. I'll just copy maybe this section and use that in my new project here. I'll call this one Swift full source control. Let's just call this the full source code for the Swift full source control playlist available for free on YouTube at Swiftful Thinking. I don't have a sample project, how it works. Let's just, I'm going to keep this as the title will remain details and I'll just put inside there. This is a test, LOL. And we'll look at the preview quickly and I can see, okay, here's how my readme looks. Here's how it works. This is a test. You can obviously create your own custom readmes. You can use Markdown. There's also editors where you can create these readmes in some sort of text editor rather than typing in Markdown. But I don't find this to be that difficult. Uh, if you've never used this before, the real quick 60 second lesson would be, depending on how many pound signs you use, it is a different sized title. So I'll copy this and we'll just do two, then we'll do three, and then we'll do four, then we'll do five, we'll do six. Uh, we also can use the dash for some bullet and then another bullet. And then if I want to do hyperlinks, uh, I'll write the text and put that in square brackets. And then after the text, I will add a www.swiftful-thinking.com. And when I look at this, I can now see the largest title, the next title, the next title, all the way down to small bullets and hyperlinks. That's, that's kind of the basics of Markdown. Generally, again, I would just find a project where you like the README and then copy it and then edit it. I find that to be the easiest way. Let's go ahead and commit these changes. I'm gonna commit them directly to the main branch again. And now when I go back to my repo, we have a nice README here. So README is great for explaining to people how to use your project. If it was a public repo, I would put in here some details on how it actually works. So for example, in my Swiftful routing framework, I have details on how it works. And I put in some code here and I put in some actual code snippets as well. But if this was an internal project, I might not have how it works because everyone on my team already knows how our project works. I might put here information on maybe how to use the PR template. When we were making commits, I might add in some lines about how to structure your commits and write good commit messages and put all of our like developer rules in the readme. For larger projects where you have a lot of code snippets that you want to share, you can also use the wiki. So in my other project here, I have Swiftful UI. 
I didn't want to create all of the code snippets on this readme. So I actually created a wiki on GitHub. So the readme is linking to the wiki. And this is just a series of smaller, basically, readme files with bits and pieces of code as well. It's just another way to do it. More common, people read the readme. So if you can fit it all in the readme, I would recommend that. But either way, now you guys know how to do it. The last thing that I'll just throw out here for some of you who just created GitHub in this playlist is if you go to your, you'll notice that if you go to my profile, I have a readme on my profile. And so if you want to create a readme on your profile, you can Google how to do it, but all you need to do is create a repo in GitHub that is called, that is called readme.md. So you create a new repo on GitHub that's called readme, and then that readme is going to populate into your GitHub profile. So swiftful thinking slash readme.md. Uh, so not inside a repo, but on my entire GitHub profile. All right, that's it for this video. Let's come back into our project, make sure that we are updated on our most recent branch. In this video, we created a git ignore file as well as a readme file. And we are really on our way. We're almost done at becoming experts at GitHub. Thank you guys for watching. As always, my name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.